In this video, I'm gonna break down how you can use the Sliver C2 server with an HTTP redirector in order to forward your traffic to the C2 server without directly exposing it. This is a very common C2 infrastructure setup that you need to know as a red teamer if you want to really excel in this field. So now with red teaming, there might be someone on your team in practice that is in charge of setting up the infrastructure that's the subject matter expert there. But this is definitely something that if you learn it, you can set yourself apart, put it on your resume, put it on your blog, things like that, and help you stand out in the field. So let's jump right on into it. This is the setup that we're gonna go with here. I have a number of machines in this lab environment. We have the Windows victim that we're gonna be compromising uh, by the end of this. And that is going to reach out to our redirector that's running on an Ubuntu server. And that is going to, through the magic of port forwarding, forward the traffic to our C2 server that it will be running on Kali Linux. And that way we as the red team operators will be able to interact with the agent through the command and control server. Uh, and we're gonna be using the Sliver C2 to do this. And while I'm firing this up, I will say if you wanna optimize yourself on getting into cybersecurity and really making this journey as smooth as possible, you definitely want to arm yourself with a mentor, someone that's been in the field and knows the ins and outs. So definitely go ahead and check the link in the description below, fill out a brief survey, and we will get you on the path. Now, the first thing that we're going to need to do here is let's just make sure that our packages are up to date. We won't wanna run into any potential issues. So I'm gonna start off with sudo app get update just to make sure that everything is good to go here. And once everything is updated, I'm going to go and install Sliver using the Quick Start Guide by Bishop Fox. So if you Google Sliver getting started, you will be presented with this link here, sliver.sh docs name equals getting plus started. And uh, the documentation for Sliver is really good. Definitely one of the upsides of Sliver. And as the guide suggests, we can actually install this in a single line on Linux using this curl command here. And then we just put in the one liner here, which is gonna go ahead and install the dependencies using the app package manager, which is exactly why I updated it right before this command. All right, and then once that completes, we can go ahead and verify that the service is running using system CTL status sliver. And if it wasn't running, very simple, we would just change status to start and we'd add sudo in the beginning and we could start the services that way. So if you reboot your system and you wanna run sliver, this is the command that you would run here. But anytime it's running, we can connect to the team server by just typing sliver. So we get the little banner, which is different each time, kind of randomized. And then we are in, because we have the prompt now, we are in the team server. So before we proceed doing with doing stuff on the team server, I'm gonna go ahead and connect to the HTTP redirector that I have located on my network on another Ubuntu machine. So to connect to that, I'm gonna SSH in using my credentials. And once I'm connected into that system, I'm gonna go ahead and set up a port forward using SOCAT. Now there's a number of ways to set up the port forwarding. And in the past on the Cobalt Strike video that I did a couple of years back, I opted for, I believe the Apache web server and doing the forwarding through that. You can do it on any of these web servers. So you can do it with Apache, Nginx, uh, you name it. Uh, there's so many different ways to implement HTTP redirectors. What I'm gonna opt for is an even simpler setup in this video by just doing a SOCAT one-liner that will automatically port forward our incoming connections to our team server. So I'm gonna end up setting up a listener on the team server on port 443. And in fact, let me just go ahead and set that up now. So I can say MTLS tag L for a listen, give the IP address, which I believe let's just verify my IP really quickly on this network. Okay, it's uh, 38, so 168.1.38. And 
for the port, we're going to listen on port 443. So if I run jobs, I'll see my listener is active. So here I will set up a port forward to forward our traffic from Ubuntu to there. So for that, we'll do sudo socat. And then I'm just going to go ahead and copy this command so I don't run the chance of any typos here. But to break it down, what we're doing was using socat uh, for TCP IPv4 for connections on 443. And we're going to fork and we are going to send it to our Kali Linux IP address on port 443, which is where we have our listener running on Sliver. So you you know it's working properly when you just see it kind of looking like it's hanging here. And if we really want to confirm that, the way we can do that is we can SSH in once again with our account into the Ubuntu server. 2.168.1.37. Put in the password. And if we run a netstat, we can confirm uh, the L flag here. We can confirm this right here. So this is listening all interfaces on port 443. So that confirms that this is working properly. Okay, so with that in place, now all that we need to do is generate our Windows implant in Sliver. So let's just go ahead and do that with this generate command right here. So we have generate, tac tac OS is Windows, tac tac architecture is 64-bit. Because we have the MTLS listener, we'll use tac tac MTLS here for mutual TLS. We will put the IP address not of Kali, but of the actual redirector. Because remember, if we go back and look at this diagram here, what we find is that the victim is reaching out to Ubuntu, not directly to our C2 server. So in our actual payload, in our implant, we need to put the IP address of Ubuntu, not of Kali. The port forwarding is gonna handle the next step for us, where when it comes here, it's going to do the job of forwarding it to Kali. But we need to put this IP address here. So with that out of the way, we will press enter and just give it some time to write the implant binary to the directory that I specified, which was dev shm. So if I cd into that directory, this is where it should get output. And what I can do also is go ahead and start up a Python web server in this directory so I can transfer this over to the target. Now, in terms of transferring to the target, in reality, there is a number of ways we can do this. Probably in the case of red teaming, it will be some form of social engineering and getting them to maybe do like a drive-by download or somehow getting them to install it on their system. Or even better, maybe it's not even a, a binary, but maybe it's um, something that we don't even necessarily need to write to disk. You know, there could be a number of different payloads we can use and delivery methods that we could use. But just to simplify things for this video, I'm going to just go ahead and download it on the machine and then execute it as well. All right, now over on our victim Windows 11 machine, what we're going to go ahead and do is I, I, I was sure to turn off antivirus because we want to make this tutorial as simple as possible so we don't have to worry about obfuscating, bypassing antivirus. If we, wanna, if we want content on that, I can do that in future videos. Right now, let's just go ahead and transfer that binary over. So I'll fire up a command prompt. I'll just move on to the desktop and then I'll do a cert util command to download the file. Just confirming that the antivirus is turned off there. Cert util URL cache. We can use a number of transfer methods. 2.168.1.38. And let's go over and see what Sliver decided to name the file. So it's like it named it livelybayou.exe. So I'll just copy that. screen this and we'll put in that 
All right, says it completed successfully. I like to confirm that there's actually data here, and it looks like there is, so everything looks good. I'll just go ahead and double click on the executable, and now I'll swap over to our C2 server here. And we see that I grabbed the file earlier. And let's check the sessions. So we'll just exploit that again. And now we see the session pops up. And if we type use, we can see there's the session. I can press enter to enter in this one. This one is a session rather than having it beacon back. It's not a beacon, it's actually a session. Uh, we could have generated it as a beacon, but for the video, a session will be easier because we can instantly get the results. It'll kind of speed up the video. So I can run some of the different commands here. We can upload stuff. We got a bunch of built-in functionality here, PWD. Uh, let's go ahead and drop into a shell, even though it's bad OPSEC. <laughs> and uh, that will give us a reverse shell here. And now we can start entering various commands just like we would as if we had PowerShell access onto the server. And let's see here. Not sure what happened there. We'll do GCI recurse. And we can see the different files here. And then if we want to actually take some actions on the target, let's spawn like calculator app, for example. And now if we go over to the system, we can see the calculator app is running, confirming fully and well that we have code execution as the VBox user. That was a demo of setting it up with redirectors, which is a very practical way to use it in a red teaming engagement. There's a lot more practical stuff you'd have to do if you're actually running a red team engagement, like playing around with malleable Z2 profiles, things like that. All of that stuff we can cover in future videos, but yeah, I hope you're enjoying these technical videos that I'm starting to spring up with again. Let me know down in the comments section below. I'm trying to bring back more technical content on this channel, just like I did back in the day. And like I said, if you want to optimize your yourself in the journey of getting into cybersecurity, arming yourself with a mentor, definitely check the link down in the description below, fill out the brief survey, and I'll get you on the path. Other than that, I will see you guys in the next video.